Hi and welcome to Best in Tesla. So we are hearing a lot of thought right now about Tesla not doing well in China. There are EV demand problems and the competition is apparently still coming and the stock is still dropping. But I would like to show you in this video that other than the stock price has dropped, the other claims are simply not true. Tesla is the one holding everyone else in a headlock. And as the Lantis CEO said, it will end in a bloodbath. Yes, but not for Tesla. But most other legacy automakers, things are not looking too good. So let me show you why and let's dive right in. So, people are not understanding that Tesla is not hurting because of the price cuts. They are still earning money. So who cares? <laughs> but the others are not even earning money as it is right now, as the price of producing an EV for the legacy automakers are higher than what Tesla sells them for and still earns money. So this will end in a bloodbath, but for the legacy automakers, not for Tesla. And Tesla wants to ramp up the Berlin factory, so they are not going to slow down, even in a high interest rate economy. As the more they ramp up the factory, the lower the cost of producing their cars goes. So if Tesla needs to, they will cut prices again to continue to scale up their production of their two newest factories in Berlin and Texas. And Stellantis CEO Carlos Traveras has warned that a bloodbath is coming if EV makers follow Tesla and Elon Musk in the race to the bottom. As he said, if you just go and cut prices regarding the reality of your cost situation, it is a race to the bottom. And the race to the bottom will end with a bloodbath. And that is exactly what I am trying to avoid. Yes, but Tesla is not just cutting prices regarding reality. Dear Carlos, Tesla is still earning money on their EVs. Yes, much lower margin than before, but still earning money. So they can easily do this and not be in trouble. But yes, you will be in trouble because of this, as your EVs are already uncompetitive. And because of Tesla's prices, they are also uncompetitive on price. So yes, not many will buy your EVs, but continue to buy that Tesla Model Y that was the best-selling car in the world last year. And even after all the price cuts during 2023, Tesla still had $15 billion on the bottom line and had $4.4 billion in free cash flow and have $13 billion in the bank. So still doing great. And the Model Y will probably become the best-selling car in 2024 in Europe once again. And the bloodbath we will see is from the legacy automakers starting to bleed out. But Tesla is doing extremely well, despite what you might hear from the Wall Street or feeling when you look at the Tesla stock prices down. But Exile on X put all the numbers of the BEV market into this great article or thread on X, where he shared this great chart he has made. And here is a one showing the global BEV market share. And you can see Tesla and BYD are the two all dominating forces. To find the leader, according to the President of the United States, is like finding Waldo. Very difficult. But you can see them down here in that little tiny green box. So let's not talk about GM and leaders in the same sentence again before they are actually well, just in the top 20, for crying out loud. GM and their EV business is still nothing but the biggest joke ever in the car industry. Let's see if they are ever going to be able to change that. You led and it matters. Because we could also take a look at this chart here 
where we can see the sales through the last three years. So here we have a great chance to see the competition that has been coming for Tesla over this period. And as you can see, even though we are hearing from the many Tesla queues and analysts that Tesla would not do great in Europe because of all the competition we had here. Well, as you can see in 2021, Tesla was just in front of every one of the European car brands combined. In 2022, every one of the European car brands combined sold just a tiny bit more than Tesla did on their own. And in 2023, we can see that every one of the European car brands combined still only sold a tiny bit more than what Tesla did by themselves. What competition! Combined, the European automakers cannot even really shake off Tesla. Tesla is basically as big as they are, combined, and has been for the last three years. But at least they are as big as Tesla combined. And in Germany, here in February, we did see that the Tesla Model Y is still the best-selling SUV of any kind. So even though they are down year over year, Tesla is still the one with the best-selling SUV on their home turf of the German car industry. But it becomes much more of a joke when we look to Tesla's competition from their own shores. What basically looks like a little hat on Tesla's sales numbers here is all of the other US automakers' global BEV sales. I mean, come on, just look at Ford and GM, I'm sorry, but who can with a straight face call these two automakers competition for Tesla at this moment? Their sales numbers of BEVs are nothing more than the rounding error of Tesla sales numbers. What uh, was it? Was it 1.7, 1.8 million Tesla sold? Well, the difference there would be GM. <laughs> Ford and GM are scary far behind. By the looks of it, might soon become just US only car companies, as they cannot compete in the more mature BEV markets as Europe and China. But the US market is also rapidly moving toward EVs, and even though BEV market share in the US was only 7.6% in 2023, well, that is still two to three times more than Ford and GM's BEV percentage was in 2023. So they are already behind the US market, even though the BEV market share in the US is very low. But EVs are emerging as the fastest growing segment in car sales in the US in 2023, up from 5.9% in 2022. So we should probably see 10% market share this year. A target I have a hard time seeing Ford and GM getting to with their track record in BEV production ramp. But we can also take a look at the Japanese or the South Korean automakers, and we can see they can also not keep up with Tesla, even though Hyundai and Kia have been making EVs for a very long time and have come up with some great EV offerings. They are not really competition for Tesla. As you can see here in this chart from Exile, he has stacked all the Japanese, South Korean, Vietnamese and Indian automakers together and they don't even get to half of Tesla's size. They are not even beating SAIC from China. So the South Korean makes some great EVs, but their growth, as you can see here, is very minimal. But we do see the Chinese automaker continue to towering over everyone else combined. And of course, BYD has its own little block here as they are getting really big and are the true competitor for Tesla. But even if we look at China, where so many people said Tesla would completely fail, like Mark B. Spiegel that said that Tesla's Shanghai factory was freaking meaningless. <laughs> it would be freaking meaningless. There is already millions of electric car capacity either there now or there long before that factory can be open, and they'll just be a, a drop in the ocean if, if they they don't go bankrupt first. Well, Tesla is still on track with the BEV sales in China. As the Tesla China factory is fully rammed up now, we can't really expect a lot of growth from Tesla China sales anymore. But if you listen to the mainstream media, you would think that Tesla is tanking in China right now, but that is simply not true. Tesla is still a tiny bit ahead from last year. 
so is still on track to do what they did last year, maybe a tiny bit better, and deliver over 600,000 BEVs in China. So if people think that is bad, well, that's fine. But remember, last year, the entire Volkswagen Group sold 191,000 BEVs in China. So Tesla is selling three times as many units. I just can't see how that is bad sales numbers from China. And remember how Leonard Lopez, yes, that Lopez. But what Tesla doesn't have right now is a factory. So that's a problem. Said that Tesla should sell between 150 to 300,000 cars in China, according to her sources. If they could do that, they would probably have a big impact and keep a foothold in China. And Tesla sold over 600,000 units last year. So we are still waiting for Leonard Lopez to come out and say, Wow, Tesla, you did it. You did have a huge impact and a very, very strong foothold in China as you are selling more than double the amount I talked about. Congratulations, you made it. But she's not really a journalist, but just an Elon hater. So she's just continuing to try to spread some more fud about Tesla, even though they exceeded her wildest expectations in China. And despite the increasing competition in China, Tesla looks to be able to sell just as many cars this year as they did last year. And do you remember that Volkswagen once said that they would be able to overtake Tesla as a global leader in the EV sales? Well, last year, not just Volkswagen, but the entire German car industry sold just short of 1.4 million BEVs and Tesla sold 1.82 million EVs. So let's see if they can overtake Tesla combined before we start talking about Volkswagen as a real contender to take on Tesla as they are nowhere near to do that at the moment and are actually not looking that strong anymore as a brand as they have actually dropped down the list of the best selling BEV brands in Europe. So I think the old guys are going to have a really difficult year as Tesla might be making price cuts but is still earning money so it doesn't really matter too much for Tesla but this matters a lot for the old guys as Tesla is selling their Model Y and Model 3 cheaper than what it caused the other guys to build an EV. So Tesla is really holding the entire car industry in a headlock because they need to scale up the EVs to become profitable on EVs. But because Tesla is forcing everyone to sell the EVs for less than what it cost them to build them, they will lose billions of dollars if they do so. As we just saw with Ford last year, losing $4.7 billion on selling just above 100,000 BEVs. So now we see them backing down again. But at the same time, they of course don't want to lose face to the public by not selling their EVs and not being able to keep up with Tesla. And they told everyone that they will grow like crazy for the last five years. But because Tesla has the Model Y and the Model 3 at a much better price with better specs, the old guys are even seeing a demand problem for their EVs, even though the EV market is growing. So there are just so many problems hitting the old guys simultaneously and Tesla is not letting go of their grip on the industry. So yes, I have to agree with Trevor's that yes, there will be a bloodbath, but not for Tesla. They will be just fine. But the old guys will start bleeding out and fast as their profitable business will start shrinking fast. Their EV business is not profitable and they have a hard time ramping up and the world is shifting quickly towards EVs. Europe and China in particular, much, much faster than the old guys can keep up with. This little chart show us who is actually the big boys in the BEV industry and are going to be the big boys in the future car market as well. Tesla and BYD. And thank you for watching. And until next time, take care out there and be nice. I just want to make a quick shout out here. They're not sponsoring this video, but I did get them to give me an affiliate link because I wanted to become an ambassador for this product because I have just got home from a week of shooting videos up in Finland for my upcoming YouTube channel, Best in Tech. And this product has been absolutely awesome. It's called Native. It's a next generation thermal base layer. They are made with this 3D printed applied into the weaving, making it completely seamless and making the fabric consist of millions of small holes that makes it highly 
ventilated, light and ultra, ultra flexible. I have never felt anything like this. It is so light and flexible. You don't really feel like you're wearing anything. There is no resistance. You have 100% freedom of movement, even though it fits tight to your body completely. There is just no resistance. And that is what a good base layer are supposed to do, right? Cover your body completely to make the moisture from your skin go to the outside of the fabric and then vibrate. And this fabric does exactly that, but without any compromises on your movement or feeling like you're being choked. The thousands of small holes from the 3D printed mesh of this fabric is made of the best ventilated merino wool and 3% silver I has ever tried before. I used the whole week up in Finland and the thermal regulation was just beyond anything I have ever tried before. And it never smelled. The engineering that went into this piece of clothes is quite amazing. I was really blown away by this product. It is 100% made in Italy, not made in China like most others. This is made in Italy from recycled materials. I can highly recommend you to try out Native if you, like me, love to get out in nature and know you're wearing something that will make sure you are perfectly thermally regulated. If you want yours, I have a link down below. Go nuts, my friends.